Can you see us now? No. Uh, yes. There you are. Enhanced. Yay. Hi, Mandy. Hi, world. You're out there. <laughs> okay. Please hit the like and subscribe button below. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes. Let's get started. Uh, good morning, or, I mean, not good morning, unless you're in Europe <laughs> or Asia. <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon or good evening. Welcome to the Music of Asian American Researchers, Research Center's first virtual story circle. Uh, this is the opening episode of a three-part series. The next two episodes will be on the next two Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, right here on Facebook Live, just like today. In each episode, four Asian American musicians will share stories about their lives, their family histories, and their professional experiences. A story circle is a methodology that allows us to explore how different people experience and respond to similar situations in ways that are both alike and distinctive. Our conversation tonight is based around four scenarios. After I announce a scenario, each panelist will have two or three minutes to tell a story based on that scenario. After they tell their stories, there will be some time for the panelists to react to each other's stories. Before we begin, let me just introduce myself and the Music of Asian America Research Center, or MARC. My name is Eric Hong, and I am MARC's Executive Director. MARC is a two-year-old organization dedicated to using music to increase knowledge and awareness of Asian American history and experience. Our programs disseminate information about Asian American cultures and open difficult questions about race, immigration, mental health and trauma, economic inequities, and many other issues. To learn more, please visit our website at asianamericanmusic.org or follow our Twitter or Facebook pages. We will be releasing two podcast series and a couple dozen oral histories in the next couple of months, so please look out for those. One housekeeping note before I begin. Uh, we know that the captioning is running a little bit behind. Uh, we're trying a new service tonight and we'll see how that goes. Uh, we also know that with any live captioning, there will be some mistakes in the captioning. These problems will be fixed when we release the archived version of this session in a week or so. So now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our panelists. Since this is a virtual forum, uh, can you please wave a little when, you, when I uh, say your name? So joining us from Chicago is Korean American violinist and writer Trisha Park. And joining us from Portland, Oregon is Chinese American filmmaker, singer, songwriter, guitarist, and producer Joe X. Kyung. We also have Dr. Kim Win Tran, a Vietnamese American ethnomusicologist and arts educator based in Los Angeles. And Tiffany Lido, a Cambodian American performer and scholar based in Santa Barbara. Also helping us tonight is Mandy Magnuson Hong, Mark's board secretary. She will be monitoring the Facebook Live page and to make sure that everything's working well. Just as an FYI, Eric, there is a bit of a lag and I'm having a little bit of a problem with it, but it's still showing. Okay, cool. So here is our first scenario. In three minutes, can each of you please introduce yourself and tell us about an object that has comforted you during the pandemic? Uh, Kim, why don't you begin? Sure, uh, my name is uh, Kim Nguyen Tran. Um, I am a trained as an ethnomusicologist, um, but after graduating, I kind of hopped departments. So I teach in the Asian American Studies department at UCLA, as well as the Vietnamese language department at UCLA. And then I also teach in the music history department at Glendale Community College. Um, so I kind of wear a lot of hats. It's three different departments at two different schools. Um, and then I also um, do some community work outside of academia, although it's kind of related as well um, to research and scholarship. But um, um, I work with the Missing Peace Project um, that um, organizes collective dedications at the Vietnam War Memorial each year on April 30th to commemorate the, um, the end of the war um, and the beginning of a lot of refugee journeys that happened in 1975. Um, and I'm also resident ethnomusicologist for Bridge to Everywhere, which is a, a chamber music ensemble and arts organization um, that's mission is to bring people of different backgrounds uh, together through music. Um, so all our ensemble members are classically trained, but they also are 
um, very active in at least one other musical genre like um, Hindustani classical music or West African drumming, um, Middle Eastern music, uh, Balkan folk music, etc. Um, and so um, we're in some ways trying to redefine classical music to be more inclusive, not just in who's playing, but in the sounds themselves um, to um, be more diverse in, in, in the music itself. Um, and so my object that um, has been giving me some comfort during quarantine is actually a, a tempura. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this through my headphones or not, but it's a, um, it's a drone instrument in, um, in classical Indian music. And um, it, it's, it's really calming. Whenever I'm anxious or stressed out, I'll, um, I'll just pull it out and, and play it. Um, and uh, I, I think what is comforting about it is that, of course, it's a drone, so it's, it's quite simple in that regard. Um, but it's also very rich and, and lush in the overtones that it produces. Um, so, so I'm able to just really focus on the sound and immerse myself in it. Um, and it's, it's been uh, helpful with, with calming itself. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Tiffany. Awesome, hi guys. Um, so my name is Tiffany Lytle. And I am a singer songwriter originally hailing from San Pedro, California slash Long Beach. Um, what's up to all of my Cambodian American Long Beach friends out there. Um, I am also a scholar. I am currently a graduate student at UC Santa Barbara in the Department of Theater and Dance. I am also um, a graduate of UCLA's Asian American Studies Department. Um, and yes, I have an EP that you guys can listen to if you're curious about my work out now called Cambodian Child. That EP is getting turned into a full album thanks to the Critical Refugee Studies Collective. Um, in 2019, they funded the um, EP to be made into a full album. So I'm able to add a few more songs onto it and then that should be released in July of this year. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And my bat, another aspect of my creative background is that I was a Cambodian classical dancer my entire life. And then um, I transitioned into being in a professional dance company like Western styles, African fusion, all kinds of different styles uh, based in Los Angeles when I was in my early 20s, late teens, early 20s um, for a few years. And um, I've since had a show where I combine music and dance um, premiere in Los Angeles. So that was really fun. But anyways, my, my comfort item is food. Um, so I have a picture here of something that I've made. I don't know if you can see it. It's a fried egg, Chinese sausage, rice, and golden mountain soy sauce. So making home comfort meals has been great. Thank you so much. Uh, Trisha. Hi, um, I am Trisha. Um, I'm a concert violinist, a writer, educator, and a podcaster. Um, I've been playing the violin since I was five and a half, and I've been a professional at it since I was 13. Um, I've had the great good fortune of traveling the world with my violin, and I've gotten to play concerts on five continents. Only Australia and Antarctica are left on the to-do list. Um, I graduated from the Juilliard School, and I also just recently, last year, last, a year ago, received my MFA in writing from the School of the Art Institute here in Chicago. Um, my podcast is called Is It Recess Yet? Confessions of a Former Child Prodigy. Um, and in it, I talk to um, really cool, innovative artists who are doing things their own way. And I also ask lots of questions about race, identity, perfectionism, and a lot of stuff about the classical music world that puzzles me and things that I don't think we're talking enough about. In particular, how despite the overwhelming demographic presence of East Asians in Western classical music, um, how we still struggle under the mantles of implicit bias, like the myth of the model minority and how we are still woefully underrepresented when it comes to positions of power and influence within classical music. Um, I'm currently a lecturer and artist in residence at the University of Chicago. 
And um, I'm here in Chicago. I love it here. I'm fairly new to the city, so I don't have a lot of my most cherished objects of comfort. But I do have, I also um, am engaging in a lot of what I call anxiety cooking and baking. Um, so I, I don't have pictures handy, but I have been doing just fine. But I've noticed that when baking goes awry, which has happened twice, a, a set of biscuits and some cookies didn't work out. I have like a full on existential crisis because I'm like, what do you mean they're not working out? This is the one thing I have that's going to work out if I follow directions. So that's very upsetting. But most of the time that doesn't happen. Um, and then the other thing is I have a picture of my parents. I, I'm not going to show it. It, but it's in this frame, this heart frame um, that sits on the bookshelf in the front of my room that I look at every day. And I have photos of a new niece that are a source of constant delight. And thank God for like sharing apps. So every morning I wake up hoping that there's some new um, mesmerizing video of her like staring at a mobile and I'll watch it a thousand times. So that's helpful. Um, and I have, yeah, I have another photo of my brother and all of my, like he's being swarmed by all of our cousins in Korea when we were all younger. So that's also very comforting. I think you said Joe, uh, you're muted, but hi, I'm Joe. You're still muted. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm Joe X Young and I make movies and I play music. Um, I've gotten to do both semi-professionally, but uh, both are more or less really expensive hobbies for me. Um, on the movie side, I've directed, edited, shot a bunch of different documentaries, shorts, commercials, and um, it's probably my career path, closest thing to a career path. Music, I've been doing for a long time, and I've mostly done it for myself. I just wrote and recorded albums in my bedroom for years. Um, my audience was like two friends that I would hand these CDs out to. Um, and that was the extent of it. I don't think I've ever really, you know, had the confidence to to go out into the world and actually perform. Although I did jam and play, play in bands for fun. Um, but in 2015, I got lucky and I auditioned. And I joined the Slants, which is a dance rock band based, was based in Portland. Now it's kind of spread out in a weird um, hybrid existence. Um, and I got to travel the world for the first time as a musician. Um, I'm, I still feel like I'm pretty underqualified compared to some of the more accomplished musicians on this panel here. Um, but I got to do everything I've ever wanted to do. So I, I joined as a guitarist, but then I ended up taking on a lot of creative uh, roles and became the producer of the last few albums. I wrote a lot of the songs and then also did directing the music videos and a documentary about the band and some other projects. So that's been my life for the last four years. The band's technically retired from touring. Um, Simon, who is the person that started the band, founder, and basically he is the band. And I still have some shows planned as an acoustic storytelling duo. But for the most part, I'm back to being in my bedroom playing music and that's literally my comfort item. I have all of my instruments just kind of like splayed out all over. I get guitars. I put all of the guitars I have on my wall as soon as the quarantine happened because I felt like I needed to see them in person so I don't lose my mind. Um, and then I realized I spent way too much money on music gear and I, I have no savings. But I also have other instruments around. And interestingly, with Kim's thing, with the drone, I did buy a loop pedal right around this time too. And I've been making just like really noisy droney loops on a loop pedal. And I'm realizing that's probably why I'm doing it is the drone helps me like drown out everything else and it kind of calms me down. I love it. Hey, thank you so much for sharing. And sorry that I, I talked twice with, uh, with muted. Uh, uh, no matter how many times I use a Zoom, I, I keep doing that. Um, anyway, so yeah. Do you want to react to each other's stories? Do you see any uh, patterns here? I mean, uh, Joe has already mentioned one. Anything that... I love food, too. I've been cooking and eating everything I can. <laughs> Absolutely. I have entire bars of chocolate just laying down there. I also just wanted to say, like, we're all making music in our bedrooms. Like, we're all, like, our own little concert presenters now. So you are doing... We're, we're in it together. <laughs> Uh, 
Has anybody tried any brand new recipes that's just been amazing? Yes. Oh my gosh. Sorry. This is like, I'm obsessed with the Bon Appetit test kitchen. Yeah like so obsessed and um like most people but there is a recipe for pork shoulder on polenta the polenta you can like do without but the pork shoulder is so like friggin delicious i swear i'm like i did not put crack in here but i keep eating it like three times a day and i just i'm like oh no i've developed a pork shoulder habit i'm not allowed to make it this week it's so simple, but you do have to let it braise for like four hours. Y'all just have to go on Bon Appetit and look it up. It, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to oversell it, but it was delicious. <laughs> you have a um, instant pot or pressure cooker by chance? No, but I was oh, okay. thinking that would make it so much faster, right? Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah, which yeah, might not I help your habit. <laughs> no, I don't need more pork shoulder in my life. Not right now, but oh my gosh, and it has to be with pickles. Like Asian folks know about vinegar and like, cause it's very rich. And if you eat it with some pickles or something vinegary, I mean, you could just eat, I don't know. I could just eat mountains of it anyway. <laughs> so that's my answer. Nice. I've decided that I, uh, I'm really good at not using recipes. I'm really good at finding weird things that I've had in my cupboards for a long time. And, you know, refugee mentality, making great, food out of it <laughs> so it's been really fun I've been like on Instagram I've been on my private Instagram I've been posting hashtag things from my freezer <laughs> just because I'm finding things that I forgot back there like a package of Chinese sausage nice. I have one of those too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I've been calling my grandma a lot to ask about recipes and that's been that's been nice because she lives um, with my sister on the east coast I'm in LA um, and, and she's outside of Boston so I don't I, I you know I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to visit again with us in quarantine and whatnot um, so I've been calling more regularly um, and trying to write down her recipes although she doesn't measure anything of course she just says oh my you, know, you gotta put it in until there's enough right? And I have no clue <laughs> how much enough is. Um, but she, you know, she can tell exactly by tasting it. Um, so that, that's been really good to chat with her more often than usual. Do you all have, like in Korean, there's this term called like, literally, it means mother's hand taste or like grandmother's hand mm. taste. Do you have anything like that in your languages? Mm, it's like, kind of it's exactly what you're talking about. Like mothers mm. and grandmothers never, it's like, how much of you know you just know and then somehow even if you do exactly what they do it doesn't taste the same like that's they yeah. say in korean it's like oh that's because of this mother or grandmother's hand taste it sounds <laughs> terrible in english it's much cuter in korean <laughs> what's the word in korean um like harmony is grandmother and then mm. son is hand and then mat is taste so it's literally oh, like okay. grandmother's hand taste it's beautiful yeah <laughs> Do you find that you are um, trying, like, I mean, Kim mentioned calling grandmother and then Trisha mentioned trying new things, right? Do you find yourself gearing more towards, like, old cooking or old music? Uh, or do you find yourself going towards trying something new? I immediately went into survivalist mode and was trying to live off of canned fish because I thought that's all we were going to have for a while. So I was developing how to eat canned fish every single meal for the next two months. Um, but then I was watching oh, no. with Babish the entire time. So I was just torturing myself basically like eating canned fish on crackers and watching awesome recipes. I've, I'm inspired by the new recipes. Like I actually have, even with the canned fish, I've been coming up with new recipes for it. I don't, I don't think I can stick with the same thing so I'm, I'm i know there's a comfort to the old but i don't have access to that like the grandmother's hand like i know i don't have access mm -hmm. to it so i might as well just try something new yeah i'm definitely doing both you know i'm creating recipes that i would have never really cared to make before i would have just gone out to try to find something that satisfies like my craving for tortilla soup but instead I made some kind of version myself <laughs> with things that I had and some produce that I had so you know like I, I'm doing both things that are new that I've never done before and just kind of tasting it and rolling with it and learning from it but then I'm also trying to recreate these 
older, these dishes that remind me of my youth, that remind me of comfort, that remind me of my parents' home and what my mom used to make us for breakfast. Like I even looked up recipes for doing salted duck eggs and decided that was too hard. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, I have to find duck eggs too. <laughs> not leaving the house. So, um, you know, I, I find myself definitely doing both and just, um, not caring about being embarrassed if things don't work out. Um, so yeah, the, it's, it's a fun time for both experimentation and going back to things that, you know, are solid and work out well.